Hey, good evening everybody. This is Pastor Justin, First Baptist Church of Maxton, and I pray that y'all are having a great week. And school started for me, so now I'm teaching and it's uh, very interesting. I'm walking around with a mask on, but it's a blessing as well to be to be around people and to get out. But I hope y'all are having a great week and that the Lord is, is blessing you and teaching you a lot. Today we're going to be looking at Matthew chapter 9, verses 9 through 13. So get your Bibles out and let's go through those verses. Today we're going to be talking about how Jesus eats with those sinners. And the Pharisees are talking to him and, and saying, you know, why are you eating with these? And he he goes on. It's, it's a very good story uh, for the church. And I hope you, that y'all... We'll take the time to watch this video so you can learn more about the scripture and to dive into it because it's about learning about who Jesus is and what Christianity really is and not something we just go through the motions and doing. And so before I start, I'm going to have some time in prayer and the Lord knows your prayer request, but you're welcome to send me a message. You're welcome to send it to me on Facebook, Justin Waters on Facebook, or you can I sent it through a comment on YouTube, but you're welcome to do that because I want to know and I want to personally pray for you. So let's come before God in prayer. Oh Lord, I thank you for this day you've given to us. Father, thank you for your mercy and your grace in our lives and allowing us to have another day. Lord, I thank you for your faithfulness. Someone might be watching this right now. They might not know where they are in relationship with you. That they may be going through a tough time right now. Lord, I pray that you would strengthen them and touch them through what your word has to say today. Because it's about the fact that you have given us your revelation and reveal yourself to us through your word. And through your son Jesus who lived a perfect life, died a gruesome death and rose again 2,000 years ago. Historically, a real person. And I believe he's God. As, you, as the Bible tells us. So today, there's hope because he lives. So no, no situation that anyone's facing right now is too big for Jesus to conquer. So Lord, I pray that each person would give their life to Jesus and believe in him and, and desire to live their lives for him. For he is the way, the truth, and the life. No man can come unto God except through Jesus. So Lord, I pray right now that you would guide this discussion and guide our hearts close to you. Be with those with sickness and illness, those battling depression or loneliness, those in bad situations and relationships. Pray for healing to all all those situations in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So Matthew chapter nine, verses nine through thirteen. As Jesus went on from there, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at the tax office. And he said to him, Follow me. So he got up and followed him. While he was reclining at the table in the house, many tax collectors and sinners came as guests to eat with Jesus and his disciples. When the Pharisees saw this, they asked his disciples, Why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? But when he heard this, he said, Those who are well don't need a doctor, but the sick do. Go and learn what this means. I desire mercy and not sacrifice, for I didn't come to call the righteous, but sinners. So what's going on here? Uh, one thing we know about tax collectors is this. Uh, tax collectors were not honored in their society, in, in their culture. At the time, they actually were working for the Romans and the Jews and the Romans had a lot of beef with each other because the Romans had authority over the land. The Jews thought that God had given that land, given them that land, and so there was a there was a a conflict between the Romans ruling and the Jews. And the tax collectors were basically frowned upon because they were working for the Romans, but they were taking money from the Jews, and some of them, well, a lot of them were corrupted and using and taking more money than they were supposed to and keeping that money, taking advantage of working for the Romans because the Romans had a lot of power then. 
And they abuse that, that power. They abuse that power. And uh, that's the first point I want to make out today is, is the fact that there was an abuse in power with the tax collectors and with the Romans. For sure, they, they didn't believe in God. You know, the Romans didn't believe in God. They had their own gods that they believed in. They didn't believe in the God of the Bible. In the example of Jesus, as we'll see what mercy means and what it means to, to live out your faith and to love other people, have compassion. They didn't know that. But also, the religious leaders, the ones that were seen as knowing God, knowing what mercy was, I don't know what this is, but knowing what mercy was, knowing what grace grace is, what love is, they didn't know it. Because they themselves, the Pharisees, decided to use their power, their authority, over the people to add on law after law after law after law and they didn't understand God's mercy and and as Jesus tells them at the end of these verses and as we'll go into it so I want to make clear that both sides have missed the boat the Romans the tax collectors and the Pharisees the religious leaders both of them have missed the boat and and they were both in this sad situation separated from God not knowing what it means to know God and his love and his mercy over their lives because of the abuse of the power. Jesus reminds us here as he speaks to the Pharisees and we see that throughout the scripture how he speaks to, to the Pharisees and, and their conversations and I want you to take note of that when you read the Bible see how Jesus replies to the Pharisees and how he talks to them and how he answers them. And Jesus reminds us of how important it is to personally to personally share the good news and to personally care about someone. You know, it's, it's more than just doing something nice once in a while for somebody. It's getting to know them. And, and you say, oh, that's, you know, that's hard. And uh, that's why a lot of people don't do it. And I'm guilty of it as well. There's a lot of people out there that are hurting. And I know it. And I don't personally try to get to know them. And intimately become a friend to them. And those are the people that God wants Christians to love and to be there for them intimately. Those people that are hurting and going through situations because they need you. We need each other. If I'm hurting and I'm going through a situation, I need someone to reach out to me and to want want to get to know me to help me through my problems and that's what the body of Christ is if we are the body why why is his hands not going his feet not going you know as the as the song goes because we're called to intimately know people and love them right where they are in their situation and we see a great example of Jesus doing that here because he responds to Matthew the tax collector by inviting him in doesn't he and he, he eats with people that are tax collectors and sinners, as the scripture says here. You had different types of, of sinners in the Jewish part, or the Pharisees uh, saw sinners differently. There was one, one well, we, we all know that we're sinners. We've all fallen short of the glory of God. So, But they, they saw some Jews as sinners because they didn't obey all their laws, all the Pharisees' laws. And then they saw other people as Gentiles, people that weren't Jews as and living for you know their own gods and stuff as really bad sinners. And the point is, Jesus was actually put into this category of really bad sinner because he wasn't obeying the Pharisees' laws, which was added on by them themselves. And he was with people that were, were sinners. And and also the Pharisees didn't believe Jesus was God so they were saying oh you're a blasphemer and so they they had casted Jesus away and they're asking him now you know why why are you doing this if you claim to be God why are you doing this and Jesus answers in such a powerful powerful way doesn't he he reminds us of what the core issue is and it's the problem of the heart it's the problem of people we, we saw earlier how, how Jesus heals those that believe in him he, he's he, he's healing them 
He's doing miracles as we as we've been seeing. There's been a series of miracles happening, and now Jesus, as just as he did with the the paralytic man, he's he started straight off with the spiritual need of being forgiven of of this man's sins. And he does the same thing here. He jumps right into it, doesn't he? When he tells them, he tells them this. Those who are well don't need a doctor, but the sick do. And then he tells them, go and learn what this means. And so Jesus was is pointing out here that the ones that are sick, the ones that, that don't know the, the righteousness of Jesus Christ in their lives, that don't know what it means to be forgiven, they don't know uh, what it's like to, to be loved by God, who are holding on to their guilt, who are holding on to unforgiveness, who are, who are holding on uh, to the pleasures of this world that they haven't let go and allow God to change their lives and, and allow Him to come in and rearrange all the mess, and the chaos. And here Jesus is saying, Look, I've come for the sick. I haven't come for those that then they got it all together. And the, the truth is, nobody has it all together. The Pharisees thought they had it all together, but Jesus isn't isn't talking about the righteous being the Pharisees here. But he's helping us see the real need of reaching out. And he goes on and he does two things to the Pharisees. That is very interesting here. Uh, one thing he does with the Pharisees, he tells them, go and learn. You know, the rabbis during that time uh, were looked up to. They were, they were, they had their own pupils, and they learned from them. And Jesus was known as a rabbi. I mean, he knew a lot from the Bible. I mean, he was, he was the Word of God. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. He, he was God, and so he knew. He knew what he was saying from the Bible, God's word, and he 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 does that to the, to the Pharisees. He he becomes their rabbi, and he says, "Hey, you go learn." He he tells them what to do, and then he also makes them. He he basically says that they're beginners, and they need to they need to go learn, and they need to do their research, see what this Bible verse says, uh, and he he's. He's helping them see the whole picture of what the Bible sa is saying about mercy over sacrifice. Now, what does he mean by mercy over sacrifice? Mercy. Mercy means that we have compassion for others. We have forgiveness for others. That we are generous with our lives by giving and serving. Compassion on the sick. And what does it look like to be merciful? To be merciful, it means, as I said before, and this is really the main point that I want to make from this story tonight, is God is calling us as Christians, if you know Jesus Christ, if you know God's mercy, and mercy means when you're given something you don't deserve, that's grace. Sorry. Mercy is when something's withheld from you that you do deserve. And so if I make a mistake and I deserve to be punished for it, instead of, my my mom or dad punishing me, they they might um, love me instead and say, "Son, because I love you, I'm not going to do this to you." And they'll give me grace on on top of that mercy. See, that's what God has done for us. We deserve death. We deserve hell. We do. De we deserve to be really to not exist, and 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 to to if we did exist in complete righteousness if God judged us according to our sins all of us would deserve punishment for eternity but because of Jesus Christ and that he stepped in and he lived a perfect life in our place a human being just like we are but God by living a perfect life he was God from the beginning there was no beginning for him actually but when he came he became our ultimate sacrifice. So that wrath was taken on, on him, on his shoulders. And the blood that was poured out was, was our life, poured out his life, poured out for ours. 
And then when he rose again, he said, I, I've conquered your mistakes and I've conquered death. The two, two big ones. Our separation from God, our dying to God, and then physically dying. Jesus conquered the physical death, proving that he was God. And Jesus has conquered the spiritual death, allowing us to get right with God, have a relationship with him. That's the gospel, that's Christianity in a core, in the core. And in order to understand that mercy and grace, you allow Jesus to come into your life. And it doesn't end there. It's a, it's a process of loving others in the same way, of giving them mercy and giving them forgiveness. And it's hard and difficult to remain in friendships because friendships can be hard. Situations can be hard. People make mistakes. Distrust happens. But when you're walking the ways of Christ, when you go through those hard times and mistakes of intimately knowing other people and loving them, being there for them, then there's forgiveness, then there's mercy, then there's grace. And people recognize that in your life. They recognize the compassion you have for people, and then they want that. I was reading a story by Tony Evans as we've been going through Kingdom Man by Tony Evans with the men Bible study. And some of y'all may know Tony Evans. If you don't, you can look him up. He's a great pastor in, te in Texas. His mom wasn't a believer, and his dad was a believer, and his mom hated when his dad read the Bible. And every time his dad read the Bible, she was just pounding him, pounding him, pounding him. His dad would go somewhere away from his mom and read the Bible so that he wouldn't have to hear what she had to say. But you know what? You know what he did? He never reacted in a bad way. He continued to love and care about her. And eventually one day she came to him and she said, I don't know how you do it, but you still love me and care for me, even though I ridicule you and make fun of what you believe in. And she said, you know, I want what you have. The way you're loving me, treating me, I want that. I want, what is that you have? And he, he led her to Jesus. She became a Christian. And then you see now uh, Tony Evans and his ministry and what God's done in his life. And the impact his father made on him. And so we are reminded today that it begins with personal relationships with other people. The church is called to personally love on people. And the Lord has convicted me in that. It's easy for me to preach this right now. But if I'm not living it out, then I'm not, I'm not being obedient to God's word. And what Jesus is saying here, because that's what Jesus did. He had, he had dinner with people that... And a lot of us may frown upon in our pride. But Jesus humbled himself so much that there was, no, there was nothing too low. There was no person too low for him. And ultimately laid down his life for us. That's, and that, that demonstrated right there the character of a, of a man he was. But that, that is what God's calling us to do as men and women. To have this type of character. To love all people. And to share Jesus with them. Not to accept sin, not to live in sin with other people. Because that's not what Jesus is doing here. But Jesus is having fellowship with them and welcoming them into his house and saying, Look, I love you. I care about you. I know where you are. Jesus knows it all. He knew what every person had done there. But instead he showed them compassion and love and mercy. And he reached out his hand of mercy. And so the question today is this. Are you loving people personally? Are you walking with them in their lives? Maybe somebody is in your life that you've, you know you need to tell them about Jesus. You know you need to love them like Jesus wants you to love them, but it's going to be hard. It's going to be messy. But I'm telling you right now, God's calling you to that. And there's there's people in my mind right now that I need to give them a call or send them a text message and say, hey, how are you? And, and try to consistently be in their lives. And so thank God that Jesus wants to be in our lives that he cares about us sinners who have fallen short sad how the Pharisees didn't understand that may we not be in the boat of the Pharisees because they missed the whole point it's about personal intimate relationships loving people and being there walking beside them in the tough in the good times too let us pray Our Father I thank you for your word tonight i thank you that lord you have spoken and the character of jesus christ and how he humbles himself and how he loves people 
how he's there for people from all walks of life. Lord, help us to have the heart of Christ. Help us to invite people into our homes. Help us to love people and, and to be there for them on a consistent basis. It's not just something we do for good works or to show people good works because if we're doing it for that reason, as the Pharisees did, we're going to miss the whole point. It's about loving people, being there for them constantly, building that genuine, trustworthy relationship built upon Jesus so that people see Jesus in us and want to know him. So, Lord, I pray you rise up people watching this in their churches, wherever they go. If they don't have a church, they they would come and find a church, whether in Maxton, the First Baptist, or somewhere else where they preach the word. And maybe someone's watching this that doesn't know you, that's lost, and, and they may say, I'm one of those sinners at the table of Christ. Lord Jesus, you welcome them in.